class. Tonight is chair yoga. I am uh, Dr. Maureen Craig, doctorally prepared in nursing practice and a registered yoga teacher teaching class this evening. We're using a chair. I hope you have a sturdy chair. Notice mine is on a mat so the chair doesn't slide around. We want to make sure it's sturdy as we're using it to support our weight throughout practice. So once you have got your chair and your mat in place, Please come to a seated posture and we'll begin our practice this evening. Start by feeling the weight of your body resting on the chair, feet on the floor. Take a nice breath in and feel the spine grow long. On the exhale, let the shoulders drop down, releasing with the exhale. We're going to begin with a pranayama or breath practice this evening. It'll be a four part breath practice. And I'll offer the counting and you choose if that works for you or not. So a count of four on the inhale, pausing at the top for a count of four, exhaling for four, and pausing at the bottom for four. One thing in particular that I like to emphasize is the pause at the top. We want to let go in the body and the way to do that is to take the tongue and press it up against the roof of the soft palate and then let go in the body. So inhale, press the tongue against the roof of the palate, let go in the body for that count of four, then release the tongue and exhale for four. Let's begin that. Inhaling for four, holding for four, releasing for four, on the release, you might blow your breath through a straw, pretending to blow through a straw, and holding out for four. And now on your own, with your own count, inhaling for four, holding at the top for four, exhaling for four, and pausing at the bottom for four. Continuing this flow. And if it feels right to you to let go of the counting, you can continue this breath cycle and just soften the counting and letting it drop to the background. So inhale, pause. Exhale, pause. Remembering to blow through those pursed lips like you're exhaling through a straw to help slow the breath. Finishing the cycle that you're on and taking one more. Returning to the natural breath now and taking a moment to scan through your body, noticing if you're having any area that needs a little attention this evening, perhaps a tender shoulder, a knee that needs protection, whatever it might be. Setting your intention to protect your physical body as you work with it with kindness. And checking in with the emotional body as well. And whatever you're finding, bringing kindness to that as well. And setting your intention for your practice. Place our hands on our knee and begin with a seated cat-cow, letting the spine arch back. Exhaling here. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, push the spine back. Breathing real deep here. Cat-cow with the spine, warming it up. Inhale, lifting the heart. 
exhale back. One more time. And arch it back. Sitting up tall, bring your hand, the palm of your hand to the forehead. Feel the spine get long as you press the forehead into the palm, the palm into the forehead. And releasing slowly. Move the palm of the head, the palm to the side of the head. Lengthen up the neck and press the palm into the temple and the temple into the side of the palm. Big breath. And on the exhale, slowly softening the pushing and letting go. Other side, palm into the side, the temporal side of the skull. Lengthening the neck as you press in. And exhale, softening. Then if it's available to you, placing your hands behind your head. If it's not, just cross your arms. Press the back of the head into the palms. If you are having your hands crossed, just lengthen up and tuck the chin. As you press the hands into the, finger, the head into the fingertips, broaden out the elbows. Lengthen the neck, big breath in. And exhale, pressing and releasing. Beautiful. Just warming up and lengthening that neck. Okay, reach your arms out into a T and roll your thumbs back, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Exhale as you squeeze. Then bring the forearm forward and put your hand on the fingers. As you draw the fingers back, push your wrist forward and straighten your elbow, getting a forearm stretch. So the stretch is right here through the forearm. And exhale. Gently switching sides. Forearm stretch on the other side. Beautiful. Then take your hands on the side of your chair and place your fingertips underneath the seat of the chair. Lengthen up the spine and gently let the ear drift away so that you get a nice stretch on the side of the neck. Holding on with that hand as you lean away with the spine and the ear. Inhale, growing tall and switching sides. Fingertips curl under the seat and you gently lean away. Fantastic. Now inhale, raising your arms up. If your hands can reach all the way up, great. If they not, you can just bring them up to the shoulder points or cross your arms, either one. If your hands can reach up, go ahead and reach as tall as you'd like. Exhale, we're gonna twist off here to the right, placing one hand on the knee, the other behind you on the chair, and gently using the torso to twist, not the hands. Use the muscles in the spine and around the core. Exhaling here. Inhale, arms can go up or across the chest. Exhale, twisting to the other side. Gently lengthening the spine and using the core to twist. Inhale, come back to center. Go ahead and check in a little bit with your spine. We're gonna do one more little uh, flow series here where you're gonna just raise your hands up as high as is comfortable for you. It can go all the way up or it can go more out. Then bring your hands down to the, to the knees. Reach the spine long, heart is lifted. Keep folding at the hips as the spine comes down towards the thighs. Inhale, curl the heart up so the heart is shining forward. Keep the spine long, don't let the head kick back. So keep the spine long. This is like a baby cobra here. Exhale, soften back to the thighs. Press on the thighs, lifting back up. Inhale the arms back up and out. And exhale, bring them down to the knees. Let's do that one more time. Arms up. Exhale, plant the hands on the knees. Lengthen the spine, lift the heart. Float that flat back down. Inhale, press on the thighs or the knees, raising the heart, shining forward, lengthen the neck. 
Exhale, soften. Inhale, press on the knees, lifting up, hands up. And release. Come to the front of your chair, so just the uh, cheeks are on the chair. Put a little weight in the heels. We're gonna come up to standing here, so prepare yourself for that. Spread the toes, feel the feet, have a good sense of um, posture on the mat, okay? Reach the arms forward into your chair and lean into your, into your deep squat. Then push into those heels and squeeze the glutes as you lift up. And coming back down to your squat. Inhale, squeeze the glutes and lift. Now you don't have to bring your arms up so high. You can cross your arms if that's more comfortable for your shoulders. We'll do this three more times. Squat to squeeze. Squat to squeeze. One more time. You can bring your hands to prayer if you'd like and squeeze it up. Fantastic, now we're in a standing posture and we're going to take a little bit of work on our feet. Before we do that though, I'd like to do a little drinking bird. So find a mountain posture where your feet are parallel with each other. And you've seen those little birds that dip down and have a drink of water. So that's kind of what we're thinking of when we're here. So you bring your arms up if that's comfortable or cross the arms if that's better for you. And exhale as you soften your knees, fold at the hips and come down into that drinking bird. Inhale up, exhale drinking bird. Inhale up and again. Inhale up one more time. Exhale, drinking bird. Beautiful. Now we'll move into our flow practice. So finding a position for your chair that can support your runner's lunge. And we're gonna start with rolling the feet. So um, you might actually, let's uh, switch. So I'm gonna use the back of the chair at this time, okay? So we're gonna have one foot forward and one foot back. We want to just pay attention to the soles of the feet for a moment. So on the foot that's forward, just lift the toes, pull the toes back towards you. You might even feel a little bit of stretch in the calf or the hamstring. Then plant that foot down and take the back heel and roll up through the foot, stretching those toes as you push back a little bit with your hands. Let the back heel land, lift the front toes. And one more time, back heel rises up. And then step up and switch sides. We're gonna take the soles of the feet on the other side. Front toes, lift and stretch. And then the back heel lifts up, roll up through the toes and back down. Our feet are in shoes all day and tend to get a little fatigued by having that limitation. So it's great to stretch them out here. All right, now we're going to walk our feet back until our ears come between our biceps. This is called chair dog. So just let your hands rest on the back of your chair and your chair is in a sturdy position on the mat. Lengthen the tailbone out behind you. Let the heart face the floor. And then inhale, lifting the heart. Exhale and drop it back into chair dog. One more time, lifting the heart. And exhale, chair dog. Now we're gonna come into some push-ups. And what I want you to realize is you wanna make sure again that you have a sturdy connection with the floor because we're gonna put some weight into this, into the back of the chair. So you can do your um, push-ups off the back of the chair or off the chair seat. Or if you have a counter or table nearby, you could use that as well. Just make sure whatever surface you're using for your push-up, that it is very sturdy and connected in a way that it's not gonna slide away from you. Okay, so taking the number of push-ups that are right for you, just keep a nice flat back as you bring the elbows in towards the waist and push away. 
And you can do this two or three times. You decide what's right for you tonight. Make sure that you're bearing the weight on the part of the hand that is close to the base of the thumb and the fingers, the first two fingers. And you can just hold plank as well. You do not have to do the, the push-ups, but you can if you like to. Keep the tailbone lifted just a bit so we don't have a sinking uh, low back. We'll do one more. And then just push back to your chair dog for a moment, stretching out the length between the fingertips and the tailbone. And then coming up, we'll take a little balance posture here. So standing on one leg, you can place your hand on the chair for a little support. Float the other heel and draw a circle with that heel. Now you might challenge yourself and say, hey, can I let my hand off the chair as I do this and maintain my balance? And then with the next breath, switch directions. There we go. Breathing and circling that foot, that free floating foot. And releasing. Bring your weight down and come to the other side. So one foot is stationary. Your hand can be on the back of the chair for support and start finding the circle in the other heel. So draw the toes towards you. Just draw a nice circle. You can go slowly or rapidly. Whatever works for you it can be a small circle or a little bigger circle. And if you lose balance, no worry. This is a practice switching direction. We're here to practice and strengthen ourselves. Okay, there we go. I'm losing my balance. <laughs> All right, very good. Okay, now we'll move into our flow and we're gonna have a little bit of runner's lunge flow here. So setting the chair in a position where you can put one foot in front of it and the other foot out behind you. And you choose how deep your runner's lunge is. I like to lean on the chair to help me go a little bit deeper, but you see what works for you. And then lifting the back heel so you have two lanes of traffic for your runner's lunge. Offloading a little weight onto the seat chair lets you play with how low can your hips sink your heart lift, just rocking back and forth between the two feet a little bit. Try to keep that front knee right over the ankle. And then when you have a comfortable position in your runner's lunge, let's see if you can bring your elbow, right elbow to the right knee or left elbow to the left knee, whichever you're at. And then I'm using that same hand to sturdy myself on the chair. And then the other hand, I'm raising it up kind of like you might with a crescent lunge. So just raising that arm. If it's comfortable for you, you can also just place it on the shoulder or keep it down on the, on the chair. And then bring it back down to the chair. And then lift the hips and draw that hip back so you start to straighten this front leg as a counter pose to your runner's lunge. And then come back into runner's lunge. And this time as you draw the hip back, we're gonna come all the way to pyramid. So lengthen out the spine, a little micro bend in the knee, and slowly float the heart down towards the knee. The back heel remains lifted. The kneecap is drawn up the knee. And breathing here as you're stretching the back of that front leg. Soften back into your runner's lunge. I like the switching between the two postures because it really helps get into a deeper space for me as I surf these two postures and then draw it back again, pyramid. Little bend in that knee, keeping it safe and comfortable. Never want the knees to be feeling anything uncomfortable. And then returning back to your runner's lunge. And this time, leaving your hand, uh, the opposing hand, on the chair or bringing your elbow down. Then rotate your heart towards the knee. 
Keep that back kneecap lifted and see if that top arm can lift up. Now, if that's uncomfortable for your shoulder, you can just place it on your hips and roll the shoulder open as well. Or you can just leave it on the knee. So whatever is working for you, just see if that is available to you. Okay, you can also just bring the hand up in this position. And then untwist that runner's lunge. And we're gonna come to the other side. So I'll move my chair to the other side of the mat and you can just mirror me on, on the way that you're doing it on your mat. So the other foot comes forward. We're in our runner, runner's lunge again, now on this side. Putting my weight on the chair to help me kind of explore the depth of my runner's lunge. How far is comfortable for me to step that foot back and the other foot forward and my hips to sink. Just feeling that out, surfing that stretch. Heart is lifted and breathing. Now bringing your elbow to the front knee, the same side as the knee, lifting the other hand up. But this hand that's on the knee, uh, the elbow that's on the knee, that hand can go on the chair for sturdiness and then raise that other hand up. Squeeze the back glute to help you open that hip flexor. And then bring it down and draw that hip back. Feel the relief in that leg. And then coming back into your runner's lunge, maybe rocking up on the toe a bit. And exhale, exploring our pyramid now. So that front hip is coming way back, a little micro bend stays in the knee. The spine is long as it floats over the knee. Gently lowering yourself towards the knee. Breathing with that stretch. I've found these stretches in the back of the legs, the hamstrings, the calves, and the quads are all very powerful in helping work out restless leg, if you have any trouble with restless leg. Bring that knee forward. Coming back to your runner's lunge. The, the big muscle stretches really help relieve that and help you sleep a little better. At least that's been my personal experience. Now bringing the hand or elbow down onto the chair and turning the heart towards the knee. And then that top arm can go up, can go on the hip, can go on the shoulder, can reach out to the side. Practitioner's preference, whatever works for you. And bringing that down and stepping back towards each other. All right, a little cleansing breath and then we'll take our second flow. So for the second flow, we're gonna do a Warrior Two series. And so we'll have the chair supporting me with the short side towards me. No, I actually, I'm sorry, I, I like the tall side towards me. But depending how deep you get in it, you may prefer the shorter side. You can also actually support your legs and the weight of your legs seated on the chair. So in the warrior poses, I'll just demonstrate this briefly. You can actually put the weight of one leg on the chair and come into your warrior two here or here. Okay, so that's an option as well. If you're gonna follow me with the standing and use the chair as a form of support, then stand behind the chair so that that back of the chair is available to rest your hand on when needed. Now we're gonna have one lane of traffic, so the toes are at the front of the mat, the back toes point out perpendicular to the mat. We'll bend the knee, the front heel lands in the same line as the back arch. The front knee is right over the ankle. This is our warrior two pose. Feel the spine grow tall, and then the arms can come out per right parallel to the earth, so reaching out as far as they can in front of you and behind you. If that's too much for you, you can bring your elbows in, hands up, okay? Or hands across the chest, you choose. Okay, 
If your arms are out, let your fingertips reach away from each other. Find the breath in the body. Let the exhale all the way out. Inhale to fullness. Exhale, draw in that pelvic floor a bit. Two more breaths. One more. Now the front palm comes up. We're going to take proud or peaceful warrior. Reach that hand to the sky. The back hand comes down the leg. And remember, that hand can rest on that chair at any point to help stabilize you so you don't lose balance. Okay? So work with your vision. The further you look away from where you're standing, then the easier it is to hold your balance. So see if that works for you. Try and get your vision off into the distance. Now straighten the front knee. We're coming to reverse triangle here. Don't forget you can put your hand on the chair as you transition in particular. With the next transition, let's do that. Place your hand on the chair. Grow long in that front arm as we're tipping over to triangle. So that the hand is now coming down to the inside of the calf or the thigh. Try to avoid the knee. And then once it's placed there, rotate the shoulders so they stack. And then you might leave your hand on the chair or you might raise it up to the sky. Trikonasana. Breathing. A small little micro bend in the front knee keeps that leg very comfortable. Two more breaths. Coming back to our warrior two, option to place your hand on the chair as you transition in particular. All of yoga poses have an element of balance, don't they? Peaceful warrior again. Hips are sinking. One more breath here. And now hand on the chair as you transition, bringing that elbow down to the knee. This is called extended side angle. Draw that top up arm over the ear if that's available to you or just roll it behind you. Hand on the hip, roll the shoulder open. So any of those options work. Take a few deep breaths into the low belly. One more. And then come on up. And we're going to take these moves on the other side. So rotating the feet. So the, now what was the back toes become the front toes. And the back toes are facing off towards you while my front toes are facing out in front of me. Bring that knee directly over the ankle and take a few moments to really get a sturdy foundation. If you have a good root to your posture, it really helps you be more sturdy in the whole posture. So play around with the footing. Is it better for you to shorten your stride or lengthen your stride? Play with that. And then once you're into that posture, feel the spine reach up and come into your warrior two pose and begin to breathe. Breathing helps us calm the nervous system, access our strength. One more breath here. Rotate the front palm up and transition, possibly hand on the back of the chair, to your peaceful warrior. Two or three breaths here. Begin to straighten the front knee, coming to reverse triangle. And then let's bring our hand to that chair as we lengthen the spine and slowly bring that hand down for trikonasana. Small bend in the front knee, hand goes on the inside of the calf or the thigh, rotate the heart to the side, uh, stacking the shoulders. Option to have that top arm go behind the sacrum 
or up to the sky, whatever works for you. Try to get that heart turned to the side. And your gaze can go out in front of you, down at the earth or up to the ceiling, whatever keeps your balance feeling most comfortable. One more breath here, feel it nice and full. Use the exhale to draw the pelvic floor in. Sweep up to warrior two, option to place that hand on the chair as you move into warrior two again. Reaching for affinity. You choose your warrior two. Remember, this is also an option. Elbows in. Keep your shoulders happy. Finding your way to peaceful warrior. Strong in your glutes as the feet push away from each other. Let the navel come to the spine with exhale. Slowly bringing that elbow, hand on the chair again as you transition, onto the knee and reach the top arm up if it's available to you or just on the hip or sacrum. And it can come up over the ear, feeling kind of that spear-like energy from the back foot through the fingertips. And breathing here. And then gently rising back up to standing. Turn your toes both towards the long edge of your mat. We're going to take a straddle fold twist and get a good hamstring stretch. And you can heel toe your feet apart. And you want to have the heels out further than the toes. And then from there, we're going to press on the tops of the hips to get your spine long and then using the chair to come down. Now you might need to let your chair come out in front of you a little ways as you lower down towards that mat and that fold. Let there be a little softness in your knees. If you have blocks, you can also use those as you come down into your fold. Whatever degree of fold works for you. You do not have to go deep into this. Once you're in your fold, use your imagination to just lift the tailbone up and lengthen through the back of those legs. And then slowly lean yourself over to one side, drawing your heart towards the knee on one side. Keep that micro bend in the knee. And then slowly, with support on your chair as needed, Bring your heart over to the knee on the other side. Back to center. Plant your hands on the chair and walk yourself back up to standing. Heel toe together. There we go. And now we're going to get seated back onto our chair. So we'll just let it be on the mat to be having good traction again with the floor and come into a seated posture. Okay, we're going to move into a little core work now, starting with the pelvic floor. So if you have room on your chair to place your hands, it can be helpful as we play elevator here to push down into the chair surface, okay? So just explore with this. If there's no room for your hands on that, it's not necessary. Use your uh, mind's eye to imagine the pelvic floor. And as we engage the pelvic floor, we raise the elevator up. So just squeezing that pubic bone towards the tailbone and the elevator comes up. And we hold it at the top for a count of five and then slowly let the elevator come down, okay? This is important for uh, supporting the entire core. So we have muscles that wrap around the front of us and the bottom of us, and the top is actually the diaphragm. So feeling all of those muscles for a moment, and then really bringing your attention mostly to the pelvic floor. Option to press on the sides of your chair so you push down, squeeze the pelvic floor, pubic bone to tailbone, draw the elevator up, 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 
and holding for five, four, three, two, one, and then let the elevator come down. Cleansing breath. And then repeating, engaging and lifting that elevator up, up, and up, fully engaged and breathing for five, four, three, two, one, and letting the elevator back down, releasing, cleansing breath. We'll do this one more time. These exercises are fantastic for the pelvic floor and help build a lot of strength there to help us with uh, control of urination and all kinds of function in our pelvic floor. Hands on the sides of your chair if available to you, engaging the pelvic floor and the elevator comes up, 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 holding for five, four, three, two, one and let the elevator come down. Great job. Okay, let's move on to a little bit more core work by bringing our hips a little forward on the chair. We're just going to march a little bit here. So lift up the one foot and then the other. Keep the spine tall. Don't let yourself slump here. Nice and tall as you lift one knee and then the other. And keep that core drawn in and engaged. And now if you want to, you can add a little bit of pressure from your own hands onto the leg that's doing the work. Make it a little bit more challenging for your core. And marching. Keep the heart lifted. And two more. One more. And we're done. Okay, hands on the sides of the chair if that's available to you. And then extend the left foot out or the right foot out, whichever is right for you. Spread the toes, point through the toes, point through the heel, and bring it in. Other side, point the toes out, lengthen through the leg, spread the toes, lift a little, push through the heel, and bring that leg in. Both hands forward and out and in. Now, keeping yourself seated right here, we're gonna keep the heart lifted, but we're gonna lean back till you can almost touch the back of your chair, but don't rest on it. Just stay in that position where you're engaged and then leaning forward, exhale. Inhale, lean back, lift the heart, exhale forward. Follow your breath. Feel that core engaging, keep it strong. Pelvic floor, abdomen. Now reach across and back. Switching sides. Again. And again, beautiful. Okay, nice job on all that core work. Now we'll come into a little bit of a stretch. So bringing your ankle across your knee, if that's available to you, if that seems a little bit undoable, you can lower your knee by bringing your heel a little bit more towards you. So play with that just a little bit. And then if you can place your hand on the bottom of the foot, great. The goal is to have a little bit of a stretch in the outside of the hip. So you find out what works for you there. And then press on the elbow to help open the knee a little. Keep the ankle flexed. This is a seated pigeon. And breathe with that stretch. and letting that knee, uh, ankle slide off the knee and coming to the other side. A 
letting the ankle remain flexed and kind of turn your heart towards the bottom of the foot keeping the spine tall as you fold forward just the tiniest bit one more breath and releasing bring one knee into the chest circles with the ankle and then just walk up the back of that leg getting a bit of a stretch through the back of that leg and releasing other knee into the chest circles with that ankle and then walk your hands up the back of that leg and you can just hold behind the calf or uh, sorry the calf or the thigh whatever works for you and releasing Find a little tallness in your spine and using the core, or rotate yourself into a bit of a twist. Inhale through center, exhale twist. One more time each side. And on the other side. Coming back to center, hands on the knees, and we'll close with a little cat cow again, letting the back reach back. Inhale, lift the heart, and reach back. One more time. Breathing. Roll your shoulders up towards your ears. Squeeze the shoulders together as they drop down the back. Up towards the ears and down the back. One more shoulder roll. Very good. Let's prepare for Shavasana. You can come to a comfortable seated posture and rest right here, hands on the lap and against the back of your chair. You can also choose to find your couch or your bed, anything that works for you to recline on and let the echo of your practice come into your body. You'll see I also um, enjoy doing the legs up the chair option. So if you're able to get down on your mat, then this is an option for you as well. Just bring your calves onto the chair. Slowly lower yourself down to the mat. Tuck the shoulders under, hands open in a gesture of acceptance. So you're resting here on the mat, on your couch, on your bed, or in your chair. Take a nice full breath in. And a slow exhale through those pursed lips. Softening through your body as you exhale. Continue this slow, deep breathing letting go between the eyebrows around the eyes we hold a lot of tension around the eyes can you let go just a bit more how about in the jaw is there any tension there the root of the tongue and throat softening can you let go just a bit more? How about your shoulders? Can they get a little heavier? Letting the distance from your shoulder to your elbows get long. From your elbows through to your fingertips. Both arms heavy and long. back resting against the surface that supports it. Letting the whole back grow heavy.
bringing your attention over your heart, sensing the echo of your practice. Breathing. deepening your breath a bit now and finding movement or stillness. Maybe moving your fingers and toes. Moving the back just a little bit. Taking a bit of a stretch if that works for you. coming to a seated posture if you haven't already. We'll close our practice time together. Drawing our hands to heart center. Thank you for sharing practice this evening. May you take a bit of what you've worked on into your evening and into your week. Om Shanti. Namaste. Thank you, friends. Always lovely to practice with you. Have a great week.